without further, I'd like to introduce the first speaker, who is Jake Feldman. And um, he will tell you today about empathic function and the human mirror neuron system. Thank you, Jake. All right, that's all. Good morning, everybody. Um, as she said, my name is Jake Feldman. I worked here at the UCSD Cognitive Neuroscience Lab with uh, Dr. Jamie Pineda. And I will be, my study is focusing on empathic function in the human mirror neuron system. So we've all been there at one point or another where at a movie theater, at home watching a movie, and a friend, a family member, maybe even you, started tearing up a little bit in an emotional part of a movie. And the question is, why does this happen? Why do we feel characters pain, sorrow, and joy? Uh, and the answer to that is empathy. Empathy is what allows us to share these feelings with the character on the screen. So what is empathy? Empathy is based on psychological inferences about emotional states um, that depend on a specific social context. So what are the three main aspects of empathy? The first is that feeling of having something in common with another person that allows you to, to understand and feel their feelings. Second is having the cognitive mechanisms of perspective taking, so being able to take the other person's perspective. And lastly is the ability to maintain a self-other distinction during social and interpersonal interactions. So a very important part of being able to feel another person's feelings is to know that they are another person, they're not, this, they're not you. So what about the brain? Um, what is, is there a specific neurobiological component to empathy? So is there a specific uh, brain system or brain area that mediates empathic function? And if there is, what and where would it be? So one main area that's been proposed to be involved in empathic function is the human mirror neuron system. So the human mirror neuron system, the mirror neuron system in general, is um, a system of neurons that have a mirroring quality. And this was first found by Rizzolatti et al. in the macaque monkey. And what Rizzolatti found was that these, these monkeys had neurons that exhibited the same or very similar activity, whether they were performing a physical action, for example, picking up a wood block and moving it in a specific way, or when they observed this act, same action being done, whether by uh, another monkey or by a human. And so this sparked a lot of research in the area and a lot of uh, supporting research for this mirroring system. And so obviously the next step was, is there a human analog to this system? Is there some type of mirroring system in the human brain? Um, again, a lot of research has been done in this area as well. And what they have found is that there is a lot of evidence for a mirroring system in the human brain. And that has a role in a lot of human uh, physiological and psychological processes, including action, intention understanding, facial recognition, and a lot of social uh, aspects as well, including empathy. So, um, the human mirror neuron system and empathy. Uh, I'm going to give you guys a brief history, uh, a few important studies that pertain in particular to my study. Uh, and first, uh, just to give you guys an uh, overview, the areas that have been proposed to be part of this mirroring system is the inferior frontal cortex and the posterior parietal, which are the two little red ovals you see up here. Um, all right. So in 2003, Galise showed that shared emotional expressions can be traced back to this human mirror neuron system. Also in 2003, Carr et al. observed that the human mirror neuron system components were active in observation and imitation of facial emotional expressions. More recently, there's been studies that have uh, shown that the perception of expressions and emotional states recruits the, this inferior frontal cortex. And one of these studies in particular is a Schulte, Ruther, et al. Uh, 2007 fMRI study, which I'll go into a little bit more. And that's because the, uh, this study actually served as a very useful template for my own study. Um, their goal, first of all, was very similar to mine. They are uh, interested in investigating the neurobiological components of self-other empathic function. Uh, secondly, their paradigm is was very useful and actually what I based my own paradigm off of. And lastly, they found a lot of evidence for human mirror neuron system uh, role in empathic function. First of all, they found uh, conclusive fMRI evidence that the inferior frontal cortex was involved during the attribution of feelings to both emotional states, uh, to emotional faces, and also to oneself. 
And that's what you can see here. Uh, the yellow marks on this left-hand side is that uh, the, you see the IFC activation during uh, their emotional, their empathy tasks. And they also found a very distinct correlation between the amount of IFC activation and the subject scores on the empathy test, uh, the B's empathy test, which is this graph right here, as you can see, the correlation of 0.44. So um, pretty conclusive evidence and a study that I decided to use as a basis for modeling. So my project, my goal was to investigate this proposed role of the human mirror neuron system in empathy. And the way I decided to do it was use EEG, um, electroencephalogram, as my main point of data collection. And what I wanted to do was take two opposing populations, one with a very high empathic function and two with a very low empathic function, run them through the same empathy test, and observe and compare their, uh, their activations. And the reason I chose this particular subject, and the reason I'm actually very interested in, in neurology is because if we can understand better the neuro neurobiological components of empathy and, and social functioning, we might be able to better understand um, how, to, how to help and how to um, understand the, the basis of uh, disorders like Asperger's and autism that have social dysfunction. So my subjects were all found using the experimental system here at UCSD, so they're all college age students, 18 to 22, corrected vision, no history of mental disorder. And what I did is I ended up getting about 75 subjects from my, the initial part of my study. And in order to get my populations, I ran them through something called the EQSQ test, which is the Empathizing Systemizing Quotient Test. And what this does is it calculates for each subject an empathizing quotient, how much they empathize, and systemizing quotient, how much they systemize, or how much they look at things in a pragmatic way, basically the other end of the spectrum of empathy. And after running this, I was able to get my two populations. First was the high empathizing population, which ended up, they fell into the top 50% in the EQ, and the bottom 50% in the SQ. And my other population, which is the systemizing, the exact opposite. Top 50% in the SQ, bottom 50% in the EQ. And just to give you guys an idea of what the EQSQ test is like, this is one page from the empathizing question where a question would be, I really enjoy caring for other people. And you can agree strongly, agree slightly, disagree slightly, or disagree strongly. And there's about 35 to 40 uh, EQ questions, about 50 SQ questions. All right, so <coughs> once I have my two populations, uh, it was time to run them through my uh, empathy task. And as I said, this is based off of the schulte ruther fMRI study. And my paradigm consisted of three blocks of 20 trials each. Each trial is um, presented for a five second interval. Um, block one is the self-condition, which is where we ask the subjects to view this stimulus, ignoring the four words surrounding it, and focusing on their internal emotional reaction, or their feelings towards this subject, or towards the stimuli. The second was the other condition, which is where we ask them to view the same type of stimuli, except this time, instead of focusing on themselves, they focused on which one of these four words best describe the stimulus. So for this one, probably interested is a pretty, pretty re reliable answer. And lastly is the baseline task, which is the gender discrimination task, which is where we ask them to focus on the uh, male versus, if it was a male versus a female, focus on that for the five second interval. And I'm going to show you guys a quick video of just two quick uh, trials during the, I believe this was a self task. So uh, just to clarify, that response screen basically what happened after each trial, that response screen would come up and we asked them to hit the space bar when they're done focusing on their answer. So that would move them on to the next, the next trial. So um, our methods of analysis as far as uh, our EEG sites uh, of interest was we decided to split it up into five main regions, the frontal, the central, the lateral, the occipital, and the midline. And we went into this knowing that traditionally HMNS activity is exhibited by mu suppression in this 8 to 13 hertz uh, frequency of the EEG rhythms. 
in the central region 